Hey groups, super excited to be with you today. I just wanted to let you guys know what we have coming up. And before we get into our group's questions, we wanted to have a quick conversation about what's going to be coming up through this Revelation series. And what we know is that we we can give you a ton of questions and you guys can have great conversations about it. But often we don't hear about some of the questions that you guys are wrestling with as groups. And we would love to know some of those things. We want to know what you guys are wrestling with, whether or not you have the right answers to some specific questions, we'd love to have more of a dialogue between between us, especially in this Revelation, Revelation series. So what we're asking you guys as a group is to, as we're going through the questions, as you're having discussions together, we want to know some of the questions that you guys are wrestling with. Or maybe you actually answered some of those questions, but you think it'd be a good question for other people to wrestle it with. We'd love to know what some of those are, and we're going to bring that in uh, and kind of put those questions together and answer them in a fun way that we're excited to show you coming up in a few weeks. So what we're asking you to do is, as you're going through the questions, write down the questions that you'd like um, a little bit more history to, some more answers to, and there's going to be an email at the bottom of the screen, somewhere down this area, somewhere there, and uh, email those questions, have your group leaders email those questions to that email, and uh, we can't wait to just have a little bit more dialogue with you guys about what's coming up in Revelation. So, super excited for that. Um, this week, we spent some time talking about the church in Ephesus. Um, and that church, it seemed as though they were doing all of the right things. They were doing all the right deeds. They were serving in the right aspects. And yet their love for Christ has kind of dwindled. Right? It was all based on service and not as much about the relationship that they had with Jesus Christ. So this letter to them was specifically talking about that. So whether or not you joined us this past week, we're super excited to dive into the questions regarding Ephesus, and thank you so much for being uh, kind of committed to this process with us. So stay tuned. Here come your questions. All right, kids, we are going to start off with you guys first. Here is the first thing I want you to do. We're going to read Revelation 2, verse 2 together a minute. And it says this, I know your deeds, your hard work, and your perseverance. So here's the question I want you guys to talk about together. In what ways do you serve Jesus? What ways do you serve? Talk about that amongst yourself. All right, so we're going to read from Matthew 25, and in this, Jesus is actually kind of talking about what, what he's going to say when he comes back, and he has an interaction that I'd love for you guys to listen to as I read it. So it says from Matthew 25, verse 35 through 40, For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you were hungry and fed you, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needed clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you do for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. So here's the question I want you guys to think about. As we were reading through those verses, what acts of service caught your ear? Is there anything in that list that you enjoy doing in particular? All right, here's the last thing. Here's question number three, and this is more the application piece of it. 
be creative with some of the things you just talked about in ways you can serve Jesus through serving other people around you. So think about some of those things that you enjoy doing. Maybe you heard something pop out in the scripture passage that we just read. Talk about that with each other and think about how you can serve Jesus by serving other people around you. But take it one step further and then ask someone in the group to check up on you and make sure that you're actually doing those things, to hold you accountable to serving other people around you. Thanks so much for tuning in this week, kids. Have a great week and enjoy serving other people around you. Hey adults, it is your turn. We're going to start off with this first question. What behaviors are part of a good Christian lifestyle? Think back a little bit ago, we talked about the checklist, things that you have that you want to just check off in your good Christian lifestyle. What are What is on your list? What's on your checkoff list? Question number two, what motivates you to do those things? Right, You have your checklist. What motivates you to actually committing to those things? And if you ask yourself that, maybe take it one step further and think, are there selfish motives coming from those things? All right, before we go on to the next question, let's read from Revelation 2, 4 through 6. It says this, Yet I hold this against you. You have forsaken the love you had at first. Consider how far you have fallen. Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. See, it's a little confusing to read some of those things and realize that just because you're doing the right things doesn't mean... Jesus views it as the right things. I think to an instance when I first got married, I was doing a lot of service around the house. I was mowing the lawn. I was doing this. We had a a new house, so there were a lot of things to fix and all that type of thing. And I'm not actually good at fixing. I would just be busy and look like I was fixing things. But I would think, I always thought that Jalyn would be really happy. My wife would be really happy with me serving. And yet what she actually wanted was me to build a relationship with her. We were newly married. She wanted me to spend time with her. And I was thinking that by serving her, that was good enough, and that's what she wanted. And I think in the same way, Jesus is asking for a relationship. He's not just asking for us to serve in a specific way. He wants us to be in relationship with him and the people around him. So here's the question. Do you remember what it was like after the moment you made your faith your own? So that first moment. Or maybe if you didn't grow up in the church, it's a moment where you said yes to Jesus for the first time. Did, did you want to tell people about it? What, what were some of those reactions? Did you want to pray all the time? Did you just devour the Bible? Talk about some of those things amongst your group. And question number four. How can you intentionally continue to treat your faith with the excitement that you once had at first? So think about that first faith that you guys just talked about as a group. How can you go back to that season where you were just so excited about what you were learning? How can you get back to that place? And that's all we have for this group of questions. There is a digging deeper section on the back. And if you guys have some extra time, it is great to have some more discussion about what's going on. And we'd love for you to join us in discussion there. So feel free to turn that onto the back paper and your group leaders will read you through that discussion.
Hey groups, this is the group Vine. I wanted to give you kind of a sneak peek because this isn't actually going out to everyone. Um, we wanted you guys to have first dibs on this. We are partnering with Feed My Starving Children. It's an organization that packs a ton of food together uh, for kids and we get the opportunity to kind of help them along in a coming weekend in a few weeks. Um, so their goal is to raise and pack 140,000 meals for kids. And we have reserved 60 spots. And we're asking groups to think about if you'd want to serve as a group and help pack these meals. So the dates are March uh, 6 and March 7. And there's a few different times. So talk about it in your group. We've talked about serving this past week. Um, and maybe your discussions have led to how can we serve as a group. Uh, this, this is an opportunity to do that. So talk to your group leaders. Your group leaders have more information about what this event could look like and how to sign up for it. So uh, talk about that amongst yourselves. See once if that's an option that you guys would want to do. And also just uh, want to let you know again that we talked in the beginning of the video about the Revelation questions. Uh, again, we'll put the Revelation questions at the bottom of the screen, and we'd love to interact with you on a different way through that. So thanks so much for engaging in group questions this week. Hope you guys have a great week. We'll see you soon.